Representative Gallagher's decision to give up his seat in Congress before his term ends is raising some eyebrows. It makes it a challenging situation even more challenging. Tonight, what this decision means for Northeast Wisconsin and the balance of power in Congress ahead of the November election. Good evening and thanks for joining us here at 9 tonight. Northeast Wisconsin is reacting following Congressman Mike Gallagher's decision to leave his position in Congress earlier than original thought, really originally thought. That's right, and that announcement coming on Friday, it comes less than two months after Gallagher announced that he was not going to run for re-election anyway. Gallagher's resignation comes with implications down the stretch before November's election. Fox 11's Andrew Mertens brings us multiple views. 8th District Congressman Mike Gallagher says he'll be ending his time as an elected representative on April 19th. The announcement comes less than two months after Gallagher announced he would not seek re-election. That means a portion of Northeast Wisconsin will be without representation in the House until next year. There are implications there because representatives represent their constituents in a variety of different ways, not just lawmaking. Fox 11 reached out to Gallagher for comment, but he was unavailable for interview. In his announcement Friday, Gallagher said in part, I've worked closely with House Republican leadership on this timeline and look forward to seeing Speaker Johnson appoint a new chair to carry out the important mission of the Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party. My office will continue to operate and provide constituent services to the 8th District for the remainder of the term. Gallagher's seat won't be filled until January when the new Congress is officially sworn in. The Republican Party of Brown County says it's not on board with Gallagher's decision. A statement to Fox 11 read, The Republican Party of Brown County is profoundly disappointed with Congressman Mike Gallagher's recent decision to resign from Congress effective in April. While we are still working through the legal and procedural issues arising from the timing of this decision, we urge Congressman Gallagher to serve out his term and fulfill the promises he made to his constituents who elected him. Across the aisle, Democrats want answers as to why exactly Gallagher decided to resign. It's interesting the way he's going about his exit and... While I would like for him to maybe give a press conference and explain what he's thinking, you, you can read between the lines pretty easily here and see that he's just had enough with the dysfunction. Here's a calendar for the remainder of the House of Representatives schedule. The days the House is in session are highlighted in yellow. Gallagher's final day falls on a Friday, after which the Republican majority in the House will shrink. Republicans will hold 217 seats compared to 213 seats held by the Democrats. The vacancy will mean the GOP can only withstand a single party member flipping their vote. If any more do the same, Republicans will no longer have the simple majority needed to unilaterally pass bills. It makes it a challenging situation even more challenging. With roughly eight months until the November elections, Gallagher's early exit is putting even more of a spotlight on Washington. Andrew Mertens, Fox 11 News. An upcoming special election could help Republicans regain one seat in the House. In May, voters in a California district will decide who will finish out the remainder of former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's term. McCarthy was voted out as House Speaker back in October, and he resigned at the end of last year. State Senator Andre Jacques is one of two candidates to announce he is running for Gallagher's seat. In a statement to Fox 11, Jacques writes, I disagree with Congressman Gallagher's decision to leave before the end of his term. We deserve representation and the country needs now more than ever strong conservative leadership to stop the disastrous Biden administration. Former State Senator Roger Roth of Appleton is the other Republican seeking to replace Gallagher. From your point of view, is this kind of surprising seeing this coming from Gallagher in his camp of, you know, him deciding to resign come April 19th, I believe it was, 19th? Well, I guess he, he had indicated that this was going to be his, his last term in Congress, right? And he was going to be retiring. Um, and in terms of the, the leaving office early, I mean, it's not necessarily unprecedented. Um, it didn't come out in the original announcement, so perhaps that made it surprising to some. Uh, but at the end of the day, as he said, it's a family decision, and you know, there's nothing that necessarily requires him to to stay in office and, and hold that term. Um, but it's not something we see often, but it does happen. Yeah. Now, uh, with this, I guess, what does this mean for a lot of the voters, like here in Northeast Wisconsin, that now you know this this decision came out at a time, or his resignation is going to take effect at a time where they're not going to hold a special election. Mm -hmm. So essentially his seat is going to be 
empty and yeah. any vote on anything that happens, you know, it won't be won't show the representation for this region. Yeah, so I guess there are implications at both the national level and the district level, right? At the national level, you already have a House of Representatives that's very closely divided. Um, it's been a chamber that has had some challenges, you know, sort of moving agendas forward and moving policy items forward. Um, and this, I think, sort of adds more complexity to this because it narrows that um, majority even further. Um, and then at the district level, you have a situation where the district won't have um, really representation in the House of Representatives until November, and, well, I mean, really January. Um, and so, you know, any issues that come up, any votes that need to be taken, um, those won't be won't have the the representation of of the district that that Gallagher is in. Um, yeah. Now, um, with some of that, so again, November would be where the vote happens, and like you said, January was where that, that new session will really mm -hmm. take effect. Mm -hmm. um, but before then, obviously, like we had just mentioned before, they they're still in session, yeah, <laughs> and there's still going to be some things going on. So I guess can you maybe get into some of the of what we could see them take action on, sure. um, you know, before November via the election, essentially. Yeah, so we're getting close to a presidential election, uh, and typically when that happens, you don't see a lot of really high-profile issues come up. Uh, members of the legislature are starting to focus on re-election, particularly in the House of Representatives. Um, it also isn't the best idea to, to have controversial things move forward as you're getting close to, to re-election or having to make decisions on those types of things. But that being said, there's also... Uh, important issues occurring, right? Uh, uh, funding for Ukraine, other foreign policy uh, type topics in particular that may require some action depending upon how those things develop. Um, so things can arise, things can come up that we don't anticipate that can require action. Um, but in terms of planned activities, we probably won't see a lot of really big things coming through until the election is concluded and the new Congress uh, begins. Yeah, now I'm sure this kind of goes without saying, but can you maybe get in a little bit more of the why with that? You know, why won't they take up, say, more controversial things, or why are they not, you know, trying to take action on measures right before an election or the month of? <laughs> Well, I guess it, it sort of depends upon who the representative is, but typically you're focused on those re-election efforts. Obviously, in the House of Representatives, you're running every two years, um, so you have to keep a pretty close eye on your constituents, on your district, um, and that is especially heightened as we're getting close to, to an election. Um, and then you also... If you're, if you're in a pretty good place, you, you don't like uncertainty, right? And you don't like unexpected things to come up. Um, so having to take a stand on perhaps a controversial issue maybe doesn't, it's not something you want to address as you're trying to run for re-election. Uh, at this point, you sort of know what your talking points are going to be. You, you know how you're going to move forward. Um, and uncertainty and surprises can upend that sometimes. So I guess, do you really see this being a big impact on voters right now in terms of, you know, when Gallagher leaves, their representative is not in Congress, but in turn, they're, like you said, some of the bigger things that they may vote on here are more foreign policy issues or funding for Ukraine, which obviously a lot of people do view as a, you know, relatively, there's, I think that's getting more polarizing of people who are still for it or people mm -hmm. who are kind of over, mm -hmm. you know, using our money towards that. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, you know, what the effects are going to be here, um, I think we'll have to sort of wait and see uh, what that looks like. And I will say that I think it's shaping up to be a really interesting primary election, uh, particularly on the, the Republican side uh, for Gallagher's seat. Um, you have a few folks that are in the state legislature or were in the state legislature that have, have said that they're going to run. You have a person that has been uh, closely tied to Wisconsin politics uh, and, and closely allied with President Trump uh, that's uh, sort of hinting at a race and it'll be interesting to see where that rhetoric goes. Um, you know, Gallagher was 
was someone who voted pretty typically consistently Republican, but at the same time, as we saw recently, wasn't afraid to break uh, from the party on a few issues. So it'll be, um, again, interesting to see what these folks who are running highlight uh, and sort of the stand that they take. Is it very closely aligned to, to former President Trump? You know, is it more toward the center, like some perhaps viewed Gallagher? It's, it'll be a fascinating race to watch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you see this, oh, now? not necessarily the, the resignation, but do you see with Gallagher being out and we're going to be picking a representative, is this really opening the door for Democrats? I know they don't have anyone formally running right mm -hmm. now, but I actually just talked with the Prowling County, Repu 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 County Democratic Party, excuse me, where they kind of hinted at there sounds like there could be some announcement coming mm -hmm. soon. There sure. was no date, but they, they yeah. could only say soon. Um, well, running for an open seat is almost always easier than running against an incumbent. Uh, so if I were the, the state Democratic Party, I would be um, excited about this. Uh, this. You have now a better chance, perhaps, than you did before. Uh, Gallagher was pretty popular in the district overall, um, and it really is going to depend on who wins that primary and sort of the policy positions that they stake out. And that will sort of determine, I think, the route that the Democrats take and, and their candidate takes and how they frame themselves and, and how they sort of approach the district. Um, so, yeah, I think they, they have a better opportunity than they did before um, if you were going to be running again. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess just to hit it home, talk a little more about the balance of power in Congress and what this, you know, the resignation could mean for, you know, chamber, I guess, for lack of a better word. Yeah, I mean, the the House of Representatives is very closely divided. It now will be even closer than it was before. Um, you've had a, a party that's been in control that has sort of been challenged to unify behind a particular message, behind a particular leader. Um, and so now if you have anyone, really anyone, literally anyone, defecting um, away from sort of the the popular position or, or sort of the position that's, that leadership is, is pushing, that's going to create a huge challenge uh, to govern and, again, to move a, a policy agenda forward um, just from the Republican side. And then you have a, a, the, the Democratic side that has been pretty unified and opposing you know, whatever um, Republicans have put forward. So, yeah, it makes it a challenging situation even more challenging. Yeah. And just again with the voters, I really want to hit it home. You know, you don't see this really being, we have to kind of wait and see what kind of impact this has, but you don't really necessarily see this having huge implications for those, these next few months after his resignation, right? With well, I think, you know, as, as a general populace, you want to be represented in Congress, right? And there's, there's no getting around the fact that the, the voters, the, the people who live in Gallagher's district won't have that representation. Um, from mid-April until the new Congress takes over. Um, so there are implications there because representatives represent their constituents in a variety of different ways, not just lawmaking. Um, so there is that piece of it, and, and that is something that we should be aware of and, and probably be a little bit concerned about um, in terms of are we going to be doing any sort of fundamental changes to immigration or reproductive rights or any of these big controversial issues over the next few months. The, the odds are probably are not great um, or, or not good, but you know there are there are representation impacts for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, Mr. Helmet, I didn't think I had anything else unless you had anything else you wanted to add. No, I think it was you had good questions, good coverage. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, thank you. I yeah. really appreciate it. Like I said I was.